So now in recent videos, we looked at uh, not gates with uh, Schmidt triggers. You can get uh, probably every other logic gate uh, with uh, Schmidt triggers. So I made this diagram a while ago, but we got the uh, 74HC132 uh, right there. So I got the uh, pin layout there. And so it is a quad. There are four of them, NAND gates. So we're gonna use this bottom left one. I did tie the inputs to uh, one of the supply rail uh, voltages as you can see there either positive or negative doesn't really uh, matter and um, of course always uh, check with the data sheet see if they have a preferred one um, but uh, in any case uh, that makes this particular integrated circuit waste a lot less current I'll try to remember to uh, show that at the end um, but in any case the uh, only way that uh, we can get a low input is to have two high uh, inputs one way to get a low output, I mean, is to have two high inputs. And we can pop this out. This is actually floating in the air right now. So the Schmidt trigger effect uh, doesn't protect you against this. Um, so you may want like a pull up or pull down resistor to uh, lock uh, that uh, output in uh, place. But in any case, there we go. We got one low. Uh, now the output is high. We got uh, this one high. Here is where the uh, Schmidt trigger um, effect kicks in. So I'm gonna lower this uh, trim pot. You're gonna see that we jump from low to high right there. And uh, so yeah, now it's gonna be high unless, yeah, even if uh, we move this, it's only low if they're both high right there. Okay, so now we have uh, this one uh, low. That means the output is high right now. If I turn this up like slowly, there's like no middle ground region, which we noticed uh, with earlier uh, NAND gates that didn't have the uh, Schmidt trigger effect built in. So there's a little Schmidt trigger uh, symbol uh, right there. This uh, particular input jumps right from either high or low. Even this one does, except for it's jumping high and low about 60 times a second because it's picking up stray signals in the air. So hopefully that makes sense. So um, yeah, we'll zoom in to uh, the diagram. And uh, so again, I made this a long time ago and uh, 25 milliamps sinking or sourcing for the output is uh, pretty common with these uh, 74HC. Remember, um, you can have different versions. Uh, LS used to be the common low power shocky. Now it's high uh, speed CMOS HC. And um, so you gotta make sure you're looking at the letters for the particular integrated circuit that you have. And um, you know, other versions uh, likely will not be able to handle uh, lighting LEDs even, um, but the HC can. And then the 132 is the uh, four or quad NAND gates with Schmidt trigger. That's important, uh, right there, 132. So um, we had the uh, trim pot going to one input and the jumper going to the other. Here is the uh, truth table. And, oh, also, uh, so yeah, 25 milliamps of current for the output, but 75 milliamps uh, total. So that's the entire integrated circuit. A lot of the integrated circuits I've been using had a 50 milliamp total uh, current limit. And uh, a lot of them had, uh, or the, uh, the NAND, uh, not gates I mean, they have a six, like not gates with a uh, 50 milliamp total with the integrated circuits I was looking at. So you really had to like cut down how much current you could use. Whereas uh, with this one, you can get uh, almost 20 milliamps of current when you're using all four of them. Uh, fairly close, this is just a little bit below 80. Now that would be absolute max. You'd want to taper it down a little bit, of course. Um, but yeah, in any case, we have the uh, true table here. If there's any low, uh, so there's three options, since we have two inputs there that are either high or low. Any low means the output will be high. That's the red uh, LED. The only time that we got the blue LED to light up was when uh, both inputs were high. So we'll come back and look at that again. So high and high. So one low, it's red there. Uh, the other one low, it's uh, red. And of course, both of them low, it's red. They both have to be high, as we saw uh, before. Uh, so there's uh, A and B. You don't always see like A and B for the inputs, and you don't always see Y for the output, um, but uh, you can do that. You don't have to use, uh, like I put uh, one out of four right there. Maybe my original video, I used that one up there. Um, now I'm using this one down here. I like that uh, right now for whatever reason. And um, so, yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything. This will work a little bit better if I got a bunch of clutter there. Sorry, if I slide this over. So, 
As I said before, I tied the inputs to the positive or negative rail, which uh, for probably most, maybe close to all of these integrated circuits, you want to tie those inputs to the rail. So you can see we got about two milliamps of current with the blue LED, higher value resistor, hopefully you notice that on the schematic. So purposely less current for the blue LED, uh, red LED there, uh, about 11 milliamps of current. So this may kind of drift slightly with this power supply um, because this isn't as accurate as a multimeter, especially if it's on the edge of a uh, current limit. So I'm gonna keep plucking these and I think it will be basically when we get to the last. So yeah, we already doubled the amount of current this integrated circuit is using because we got the blue LED, we can do the red, and we still have one, um, that one looks like it's doing uh, uh, about the same. Uh, but we have one unused NAND gate uh, with Schmidt trigger there that we had tied there. So there you can see, blue LED, now it's six milliamps of current. It was showing two, maybe it would like drift at three or something, um, but it definitely went uh, way up there. Uh, red LED, uh, what was it, like 11, maybe like 12 or something. Uh, when all those inputs were like tied, now we're up to a uh, 16 right there. Uh, so again, the circuit's working, you know, um, even though we have those inputs uh, floating. And uh, I think with the other uh, integrated circuits I was using, it uh, wasn't quite this drastic with the amount of uh, current. It was actually doing a little higher uh, before, like at 20. Maybe it'll, the, uh, the inputs might, you know, hold the uh, voltage. Uh, so they might not jump around uh, for a while. They're kind of like a little capacitor. So that might be affecting it too. Um, I bumped up the amount of current that uh, this power supply will output just because I was in that 20 milliamp region uh, when the red LED was lit up earlier. So I think we can get worse uh, than what we have now. Um, but again, we tie those inputs, uh, either the positive supply or the negative supply. It helps us uh, stabilize things. It's a good idea to always do, but I may not always show it uh, just because it's uh, kind of a distraction for the demonstration circuit. And um, so I think we will leave it there. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.